Hello guys, so welcome uh, to our last part of uh, lecture uh, six, in which we're gonna, you know, highlight or discuss about uh, XOR and XNOR gates. So basically the discussion will be about XOR. And six XNOR, as we uh, learn it, is just the inverter of uh, XOR. You know, you can just, you know, uh, extrapolate what we discussed for XOR to XNOR. It will be exactly the same, okay? So the first thing that I want to discuss about is, you know, uh, is the extension of XOR. And so we, we know that it's a, the definition for two inputs when we have just X and Y. So it's a, it's a definition is, is so easy. So X and Y, and here is the XOR. Uh, zero, zero, this will be zero. Zero, one, this will be one. One, zero, this will be uh, one. Uh, one, one, this will be zero. Very simple definition, okay? So now, can we extend this to three inputs? You know, again, we're gonna discuss or uh, verify with the commutative property and the associative property. And you can prove by two stable very easily that X, X, or Y equal to Y, X, or X. And you can also prove that X, X, or Y together, then X, or the result with Z or Z, is just equivalent to XORing Y and Z, then XORing is output with X. So this can be proven. This can be proven by truth table. I will leave it as, a, as exercise for you, okay? It's really simple. So based on that, we can extend our definition of XOR to have three gates, three or more gates even, okay? And here is, you know, there's a new symbol that have uh, three gates in it, okay? And if here's output is just X, X or Y, X or Z. And, and you know, uh, like, like AND or OR gates, okay? If you don't have a circuit that perform XOR with, with, with three, that can perform XOR for three inputs, then you can use two XOR uh, gates, each one with two inputs, and do the, you know, do the job. We cannot do that with NOR and NAND, you know? And here is a neutral stable for that. You can just do it, uh, you know, in an easy way. So for example, uh, zero X or zero. This is this is this will be the output as the output here X X or Y. So zero X or zero is zero zero X or zero is zero. Zero X or zero is zero, but zero X or Y is one. Zero X or one is one. One X or zero is one, and so on. Okay, so it's really simple to uh, to deduct here to drive this true stable, okay? But it's really, you know, uh, inconvenient and tedious each time to, you know, get this and try to remember that guy here, that true stable for two inputs. If you, we can do maybe with three in, you know, in, in a short time, but how about if you have four inputs, okay, or five inputs? It's really tedious to, you know, to do that each time. Just to take two, then give uh, get their XOR, then XOR the result with the uh, next term, literal, I mean, or next variable, then XOR the result with uh, the next and so on. So there is here, you know, a very good catch that we just deduced or drive it by looking at this truth table here. And the catch says that if the number of ones in the combinations is even X or is zero. And of course it will be one in the opposite case. If the number of ones is, is odd, X or will be one. So for example, here we don't have zeros. So the number, I'm sorry, so we don't have ones. So the number of ones here is zero. And mathematicians for some mysterious reasons, they consider zero uh, number of ones as events, or I'm sorry, zero uh, number as even. So F, which is X or, is zero. Here we have an odd number because we have just one one. 
So x or is one. Again, here is a, it's odd number, one. Here is even number, so zero. Here is odd, so one. Odd again. I'm sorry, this is even, not odd. This is even, because you have two ones. So it is zero. Here, again, even, zero. Here is odd, because we have three ones. So basically, it's one, okay? And what we said for x or the opposite is x nor. I mean, in x nor, if the number of uh, ones is odd, it will be one. I'm sorry, it will be zero. If the number of ones for x nor, for x nor, which is the inverter or the complement of x or, if the number of ones is odd, it will be zero. Opposite to x or. If the number of ones is even, it will be one. Okay, guys, and we're gonna see in the future that, that this property has, you know, uh, very good applications. Till this moment, till this day, okay, you people use such kind of uh, uh, property to implement, you know, uh, uh, some security stuff to their uh, data, data transmission. What's what, what we call the parity bit, okay? And we're gonna discuss such details in the future in that course. So thank you very much guys for uh, watching this uh, this lecture and see you in the next week bye bye